Hi, hello, welcome. My name is Sam and you found yourself onto my channel, Chasm Words. I am very glad you are here. Especially because today is a very exciting day. And this is a very exciting video. Today is the day that Chain of Iron releases. I'm so excited. I probably should have reread Chain of Gold in preparation because I don't remember like the details of things. Like I remember the like overall things that happened, but I don't really remember the details. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'm really excited for Chain of Iron. So this is going to be a reading vlog just capturing my reading of Chain of Iron. Um, my last reading vlog for a highly anticipated book was A Court of Silver Flame. That didn't go so well. The, the vlog went fine. The book did not go so well. So I'm, I'm almost like I have lower expectations for Chain of Iron even though it's by a different author. I think the fact that I was just so excited for A Court of Silver Flames and didn't end up liking that book all that much has kind of made me be like, okay, don't get too excited for Train of Iron because what if it disappoints you? I really hope it doesn't because I've, I feel like I've been waiting for this book for a while. But yes, it's Chain of Iron release day. So this vlog is going to be spoiler, like you, there are spoilers. Just heads up, I will be talking freely about this book and if other books in the Shadowhunter universe become relevant when talking about this book, I will be talking about them as well. So if you don't want to be spoiled for anything, walk away. When I talk about spoilers for other books, I will try to put like a spoiler warning. So if you just don't want to be spoiled, spoiled for those, if it even comes up, I there will be warning for that. But yeah, Chain of Iron is just free reign. I can talk about it and I will talk about it uh, pretty in depth, I'm sure. Depending on my thoughts of the book, I might end up doing a separate review as well, but we'll, we'll see if that's not set in stone. So Chain of Iron. I don't have my copy yet. I do have a couple ordered. <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a big, um, what's a nice way to put it? I'm a hoe for Cassandra Clare books. <laughs> this is not a kid-friendly channel. Yeah, I buy a lot of copies. Um, I should probably just do a like bookshelf tour at some point. You guys can see just how many I have. But I ordered so many copies of Chain of Iron. It is freaking ridiculous. Note to self, I actually ordered one that didn't ship out of the UK, so I have to contact the person and let them know tracking information. <sighs> or I put on reservation just a regular first edition of the US edition. Uh, it's at work. <laughs> waiting for me, which we'll get to in a second. And then I also ordered the Waterstones exclusive edition, the Fairy Loot exclusive edition, and the Illumicrate exclusive edition, and the Fane exclusive edition, which is really just a different dust jacket. That's the one that doesn't ship out of the UK, so I need to go like talk to my, uh, my friends about it now. <laughs> so yeah, I know a couple of them have already shipped out. I'm pretty sure Illumicrate and Waterstones have already shipped out, so that's exciting. I'm gonna have those editions quicker than I thought. Although Waterstones is always pretty good about being on top of it. But the edition that I'll be reading, it's at work. I work at Barnes & Noble. It's at work waiting for me. I don't start work today until 5.30 because today is also inventory. I'm being really optimistic about it. I didn't actually work inventory last year because I was needed the next morning to be the receiver, but I'm working it tonight. <laughs> 5.30 to 2 a.m. And then the same day I get off at 2 a.m. I need to be back at 2 p.m. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. We can do this. I'm actually living for the fact that I don't have to go to work until late today. Like that's pretty great. I'm not gonna complain about that. That's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> definitely not gonna have a lot of time to read Chain of Iron today. I'm okay with that because one, I'm keeping my expectations like much more, much more chill after A Court of Silver Flames, but also because I'm almost done with Cemetery Boys and I really just want to finish it. I felt so bad. I had to put this book down for A Court of Silver Flames and it took me f so long to like get back into it. And now I'm nearly done. Like, look at this. I'm, I have like, like 50 pages left. I want to finish it before work, go to work, pick up Chain of Iron and then on my breaks read Chain of Iron and stuff. Yeah, that's that's why I'm not like freaking out or getting the ebook copy of Chain of Iron. I just have too many copies coming to really justify that. So begins the Chain of Iron reading vlog. I yeah, I hope I hope it's 
a really good book. I'm, I'm most excited. Oh, we'll talk about what I'm most excited for. How about that? I'm most excited for James and Cordelia's relationship. The way like Chain of Gold ended with them getting engaged, but him like thinking he's in love with Grace slash being in love with Grace slash Grace being engaged to someone else. Like, I forgot she did that. It's gonna be so interesting. I can't wait to watch how this relationship plays out. There's also like a serial killer thing going on, I think. I'm also really excited for, ugh, my darling Matthew Fairchild. I just, my heart hurts for him and I, I want him to have a happy ending. So bad, ugh, but um, poor baby, I don't think he will. Also, of course, I'm excited for Alistair. He was my, like, the breakout favorite character for me in book one. I really didn't expect to like him at all, but he is a great character and I thoroughly cannot wait to see what happens with him because it's just, I don't know, I really didn't expect to be that invested in him as a character. I expected to be invested in Grace as a character and I was not super invested in Grace. Like, I still like her as a character, but I was like, oh, you, I don't really like you. Like, I thought I would find a way to like you and I don't. And the reverse was true for Alistair, like, I adore him. I think everyone who's read the book comes out like, I adore Alistair, but yes, he's just great, he's just great. And then I am also really curious about Jesse and Lucy. I am really interested to see what happens with them because I thought Jesse was like gone for good now, but I guess not. Very unclear about that. That was really hard for me to follow. And Anna, oh, I'm so excited for more Anna Lightwood content. She's so great. I just, I wanna be her, you know? Don't we all just wanna be her? <sighs> I'm really hoping for some Anna and Matthew like shenanigans. I think that would be fun. I, I'm so excited for these books. All right, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna break because this was just supposed to be an introduction and not a ramble video. I'm going to break and then I'm actually about to go film my spring TBR. So that's pretty exciting. That's actually, I think, going up before this video is going up. A little bit of time travel there. All right, let's go, let's go uh, do some reading. And some inventory. I'm gonna be up late and I'm not a, I am not a person who can stay up late easily. So this is gonna be an experiment. Hello, um, I know the, the, it's probably blurry. <laughs> I'm sorry, the camera doesn't focus as I move. But I'm multitasking this morning because it is Wednesday. Um, I'm so tired. I'm so very tired. Last night was inventory and that went well, but it was late. Um, the inventory people were running slower than we were, so there was a little bit of like standing around. That was uh, cool. I did get a chain of iron, which is what you're here for. And it's in, I think this is from Fairy Loot. Um, I don't remember actually. It's either Fairy Loot or Illumicrate. This lovely little book sleeve. Um, and I themed it. Oh, come on. And I got Chain of Iron. It's so pretty. I already started it. I am um, on chapter two. I just finished chapter one and I'm already loving it. Returning to these characters is great. I'm sorry, I know you can't see my face. Returning to these characters is great. It's so fantastic. I feel like, so I love all the Shadowhunter books. Don't get me wrong. But the Dark Artifices, I don't know, didn't love it as much. I felt like the voices of the character, it was harder to sort of fall into their heads. Whereas with these characters, I think it's incredibly easy and very natural feeling to just start reading about them. Um, so I don't know. I should probably give The Dark Artifices another um, read through at some point. I think that's the, well, no, that's not sure. I have reread Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows. Did I reread Lord of Shadows? I don't remember. Um, I've, I've reread a lot of different Shadowhunter books at different times. But it's almost noon. I woke up late because I went to bed late. 
So I went to bed at like 3 a.m. And I have to work. Um, I have to leave around 1. Oops. So, I'm going to be exhausted. I really didn't set any goals for myself today except for reading because I knew I wouldn't really have the mind space <laughs> to do more than that. Um, if I even have the mind space for that, this is going to be a long day, guys. I work tomorrow <laughs> and Friday. Um, <laughs> tomorrow I don't have to start until later, uh, so that's good, too. Um, I guess what's happened in the book so far? Just... So basically, we got a little bit of angst from everybody. <laughs> it's how it started. Um, and I'm really okay with that. We haven't seen James yet. Um, I think he's the only protagonist we haven't seen on the page yet. We got angst from everybody, so winning in my book. I love the angst. I have good feelings about this one. I have good feelings. I do. Hello, good morning. Um, it is the... Mm, it's the 5th. It's Friday. I was going to record this last night, but then I got really tired, so I didn't do that. But I am about a hundred and... Ah! Come on. A hundred and sixty-ish pages in. I'm on chapter 8 of Chain of Iron. Oh my god, it's like so good. I'm loving it so much. It is so good. Um, there's so much good content that um, I'm just like loving. I think the only thing that I'm just like uh, not working for me is the Lucy Jesse drama. Like he was reading her pages of the beautiful Cordelia and I got mad at her and I like I kind of get it, but I kind of felt like it was blown out of proportion. But then again, um, it wasn't annoying or anything. I was just like, oh, okay, I guess drama needed to happen there. That's fine. But the the Cordelia James stuff is just like breaking my heart, like legit. I feel like I want to cry whenever I'm like reading about them on page. And I don't know why I didn't think I'd get this emotional. I don't know if it's because I've been sleep deprived because of inventory. But I just am feeling it so rawly. Um... <laughs> really good. The, oh, the Ariadne section with her and Anna also made me very sad and just uh, angst filled and there's been some great Matthew content and there's been some great Will and Tessa content and just not a lot of Alistair yet. He's the only one I think I'm waiting to get some really good content on. This book is so good. It is not disappointing in the least today because I'm still recovering from like sleep schedule things and I thought it'd be a lot better but today waking up was really hard going to bed at the right time was good and I felt like it had been a full day but waking up was really tough um and not just because I'm lazy but because like I meant like my body wasn't ready to wake up so um, again not really worrying I don't know if I talked about this but the last couple days I haven't really been worrying about getting everything done if it's like something that needs to be done that day I do that but otherwise I've kind of pushed it off like writing hasn't been a priority videos haven't really been a priority just because mentally I need to take care of myself so reading has been a pretty decent priority and that's just going to be today's priority as well if I finish it and feel productive I'll continue and do probably um probably some video stuff because I want to write out my ideas for my Port of Silver Flames discussion I also have to do a little bit of like networking and sharing the most recent video that went up because I didn't do that but I can do all that um this weekend as well tomorrow I think everything will be back to normal and I'm really excited about that also it's just like gorgeous outside the snow is like mostly melting it's warm ish and I'm just really pleased I kind of want to just like bask in the sun for a little bit but I don't think I have time for that because I do have work <sighs> Yes, um, I don't think there's really anything else going on today except work, 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 work. 
The book is so good. The book is so good. Oh, that is what I want to say. So when we left off, oh, it's so creepy. The killer um, just killed Shadowhunter and like took a rune and it's, he like cut the rune off the body, the swiftness rune, and he's, he's like, the rune was his now. He had earned it. Like how creepy. I love that so much. I love that so much. I love that so much. <laughs> like, and it's a creepy, it's creepy, but I love it. All right. I'm going to go have breakfast. I'm going to go read for a little bit and then get ready. I have like two hours before I need to go to work. So feeling pretty good about that. Hello. It is Saturday night. Um, Yes, it's been, I don't want to say like a super productive day, but it hasn't been unproductive. I've done some reading. Yesterday I did a lot of reading. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a moment. But I went to Home Depot with my dad to go. Uh, We're looking for a shelf for my room for my acrylic standees. So that's kind of like a longish term project, but that was fun. And then I had D&D &D and yes, I'm going to do some more reading now. It's kind of dark in this angle, isn't it? So I'm going to do some more reading and then I'm going to do some uh, preliminary work for some videos I want to film. Basically just getting everything I need in one place so that it's really easy when I'm ready to sit and film it. Yeah, so that's going to be good. Um, I'm off tomorrow too, so I, I got another weekend, so that's pretty nice. But you are here because you are interested in my thoughts on Chain of Iron, which first of all, I'm absolutely loving. I am, I want to say nearly halfway, if not at the halfway point. I am on chapter 14, which is page 310 out of 656. So nearly halfway. What happened last? So much has happened. So much has happened. And I'm just... I'm loving this book so much. Oh, okay. I have like a, a little list of things I want to talk about in my head because I haven't been doing as many like regular check-ins just because I haven't had time with how like work and everything and I've been like reading a lot at work and obviously I'm not going to check in at work and then by the time I get home I'm like exhausted, I need a shower and just sleep. First of all, this I don't think I realized until I needed to like sit down and start talking about the experience of reading this book, but this book is so built on characters and how much I care about the characters. And even little intimate, subtle uh, moments and events in the character's life have like a huge effect on me. Like it's these, it's like small things. And I didn't even realize just how, how much that affected me emotionally and as a reader. And as interesting as the plot is, I'm just so much more interested in the characters and like watching them do things and hoping they get out alive. I will say because it is a huge cast of characters, I am slightly, more than slightly, terrified that one of them is going to die. I think I'm most worried about Alistair, Thomas, and Matthew. I think they're the three that are most likely to die. Is that horrible? I love them all dearly, so I hope none of them die, but... I don't know. I have I have a feeling. I will I will say Cassie Clare is she doesn't tend to kill off point of view characters, but she has. It doesn't happen often, but it happens. So, I am a little worried, especially because the plot revolves around a serial killer. Speaking of that, I wasn't really sure how I would feel about that plot because that was kind of the plot for um, Lady Midnight, if I remember correctly. Like there is a serial killer or what seems to be a serial killer in it that they're investigating. And I didn't find that that interesting. It was okay. I was just, I don't know, that, that serial killer mystery didn't really get me, but the one in here, Ugh. And there's probably like a multitude of reasons. I think partly it's the atmosphere of the books, which is just delightful. I love the language that all the characters use. I love the descriptions. I love how, mostly I will say it is the language of the characters. The way they speak is just very evocative and creates so much. It makes me feel very present and in this time period that is set in. So I think that's really lovely. 
but maybe it's the atmosphere. I mean, this is around the same time that Jack the Ripper was around. Um, maybe it is the fact that the serial killer feels a lot closer to the characters. I mean, part of the plot is like James wondering if he's the killer, which we're going to talk about in a second. And I mean, I think part of it is because I am actually worried for these characters. And no, I know one thing that's really working well for me is the little like snippets we get from the killer's point of view. They're all done in like italics. But um, the last one that we got, I was just absolutely, I was like, this is maybe TMI, but I was sitting on the toilet I'm just finishing up like the chapter and I was like terrified. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just the, the build up, it's like a page and a half and just the end. But he was angry. There would be no more such accidents. The killer quickened his pace. One, two, three strides and he was upon the man. He grabbed his shoulder roughly and spun him around, shoving him up against a cold brick wall. The man blinked in anger, then confusion. His mouth opened and a single word passed his lips just before the knife went into his chest. You? It was so good. It was so scary. It was terrifying because like not only are we like not sure who the killer is, but at that point we don't know who the man that he's killing is. But you get a sense that it's someone we know at that point. And I was just, I was terrified. I had to know who it was. Like, thank God they don't make us wait long on that mystery because it was Elias Carstairs. I would say of all the deaths, he's probably the most notable so far. And it's, it was heartbreaking. I know he's not a good person. He's a horrible person, actually, I would argue. But it was still so hard, especially Cordelia's reaction. Like, there was one line, actually, in um, the most recent chapter. Where is it? Where's my bookmark? Yes, where she goes, My father is dead. My father is dead. This is the first morning of my life when I will wake up knowing he is gone. Like, that is just... Wow. Like, wow. What a line. That hurts so much. But... Oh, so good. Okay, I had to change locations because the card uh, filled up with space. So I had to empty it real quick. Don't 100% remember what I was in the middle of saying, except that like the um, the serial killer plot was working so well for me. It is it is so good. It's just so delightfully done. Um, Elias Carstairs dying. I didn't see it coming. That's so tragic. That makes me so sad. There's a lot in this book that makes me sad in like an angsty way, like all the relationships, every single relationship makes me sad in an angsty way. Um, but Elias Carstairs dying really is legitimately sad outside of that. Um, now Cordelia and Matthew are going on their little adventure to Wayland the Smith, which is exciting. I'm gonna, I'm really excited for this. And James tied himself up to make sure he wasn't the serial killer. I'm pretty sure he's not the serial killer. I think what's happening is the breath or Jesse's last breath is somehow letting the serial killer use energy from James's dreams to power himself. I guess that's that's my working theory. I know it's not super a strong theory, but nevertheless, that's what I think it is. Oh, um I don't have any theories, I don't really have any thoughts, uh, but I'm just really curious to see how the Malcolm Fade plot goes, because I'm assuming Grace is going to tell him that Annabelle is dead, so I'm really curious about that, is all I have to say about that, so <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go read. I'm gonna go read, and then maybe I'll check in again tonight, chances are more likely I will see you guys tomorrow. So, in case it is tomorrow, have a good night. All right, before I call it a night, I thought I would check in one last time for the weekend. I am, I, oof, you can't see my bookmark, so it's really hard to share. I'm on chapter 22, um, which is page 478, I'm nearly done. And I'm torn between wanting to savor this book and wanting to just like rip through it as fast as I can because it is so good. 
I think I'm gonna spend a lot of the rest of the night reading and I might finish it by tomorrow probably not but I might I'm not gonna say I won't it is so good it is so good uh, a quick a few quick things Cortana pledging herself to Waylon the Smith I don't trust it it seems like a bad idea it's pretty badass but it seems like a bad idea that's gonna bite her in the butt but if it doesn't that's pretty cool too I wouldn't be upset because he was a cool character it's a cool concept I love magic swords I love magic swords so much um but it seems like it's a bad idea too my heart bleeds for Matthew just on like every page him and James getting into a fight was so hard my poor baby I want him to be okay three Thomas and Alistair are finally a thing they're trapped together which is a great trope I live for it would have been better if there's only one bed but you know we can't have everything we want I want them to have a happy ending I I love Alistair I want him to have a happy ending I love them together they're really cute there was a great scene like building up to everything my thoughts on who the murderer is before my thoughts on the murderer I think it is and I don't remember his name but Tatiana Blackthorne's husband so Mr. Blackthorne I think his body is being used that's my thought don't know how like James is involved if he is like I don't know what's going on with that but I'm pretty sure that's whose body is being used to kill people and on Ariadne love them love them love them love this side plot I like that it's not taking up a lot of like main plot it's sort of fun watching it happen from the side with like a few inserts of close-up the Malcolm Fade stuff <laughs> yeah I'm enjoying that a lot it's really cool to watch th this character's uh, I don't want to spoil other books it's really interesting to watch this character at this point in his life after he's found out that Annabel is dead so living for that a little bit I think that's it for thoughts I'm really I'm gonna go back to reading I'm loving it so much <laughs> it's so good it's, it's even better than the first one. The angst levels are just so high and I'm terrified that we're gonna lose one of the main characters. Terrified. I would just like to say I was right about so many things. <laughs> so first of all it's Monday. Happy Monday. I am about to leave for work more or less so I just thought this will be a quick little update. I have three chapters and an epilogue left little weird because it feels like we've come to a conclusion for a lot of things so I'm curious what's going to happen in the next three chapters but I might actually finish it today that's kind of my goal I do have to work early tomorrow morning but <laughs> if I could finish it today without having to stay up late I think I will what was I right about pledging herself to Wayland the Smith not a good idea because it was Lilith didn't expect that but I knew it wasn't gonna be a good idea so I was right. People thinking it was Rupert Blackthorn was the killer. I was kind of right. They just thought it was him, but it was actually Jesse, which I was not expecting. It was a great plot twist. And oh my God, now Lucy and Grace are going to run off with Malcolm to try to raise Jesse from the dead. Like I'm so ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. Um, I think, I think that's it. Um, <laughs> that's really all. So much has happened. It really does feel a bit like we came to a conclusion of sorts but there are three chapters left so maybe things will happen I don't know I am okay with this sort of get a little more slice of life stuff obviously James doesn't have the bracelet anymore so. and I still think we're, we're waiting for something big with Matthew I get that sense also like Grace and Christopher are gonna end up together right like that's what we're being shown <laughs> right okay I gotta get to work. I did it. I finished Chain of Iron and it was amazing. I actually technically finished it last night but I finished it really late and then I had to leave early this morning to go to work so I didn't have time to check in then but uh final thoughts. Final thoughts. I really liked it. All the characters ended up in places I did not expect them to end up. A lot of heartbreak at the end. Cordelia running off with Matthew is not what I expected, but I fully love it. 
I'm very torn because I love Cordelia and James. But there's something about Cordelia and Matthew that I really love. I think the concept of a character falling in love with someone, like, like she knows he loves her. And opening her heart to him is just kind of a sweet thing, I guess. I don't know. I really like the concept of growing into love with someone because I think that's how a lot of relationships realistically are. You don't just fall in love with a childhood friend necessarily and have those feelings reciprocated. And obviously James does reciprocate even though she doesn't understand. But I, I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of rude. I, like, I adore Matthew. You know I adore Matthew. He's my fave. But... I'm kind of rooting for them to end up together, I think. I noticed that my camera is about to die, so I'm going to film my proper wrap up to this video tomorrow before work. It'll probably be kind of short, just like me saying goodbye, maybe any other final thoughts I have, but I can tell you now, five stars. This book was amazing. This book was amazing. It's not going to get a proper review just because, like, I think this kind of serves as a good review. Just my thoughts as I was reading it. Um, so yes, I will pop on tomorrow and give you my final thoughts and say goodbye. Yeah, see you tomorrow. All right, this is the official end of the Chain of Iron reading vlog. I loved the book, five stars, it was fantastic. Was it better than Chain of Gold? I don't actually know. I think they're probably about the same level it didn't, like, it changed the stakes, it brought them a little higher and everything, but I don't think it did anything that made me go, wow, this is so much better than the first book. And I loved the first book. Uh, it just, it didn't bring anything incredibly new that I was like, yes, this makes it, like, even better. But I did love it. I loved them both. Chain of Iron was fantastic. It was a great sequel. I cannot wait to see <laughs> the end of this series. The wait might kill me, but also I I don't I don't want it to be over yet, so I'm I'm more than happy to keep waiting. Thoughts on the ending. So I'm gonna just go through like all the main characters and like where they ended up. So we're gonna start with Grace. I did not expect her to I guess she didn't turn herself in directly, like James was like, Grace, you have to turn yourself in. And she's like, fine, because she really has nowhere else to go. Wasn't expecting that. Really wasn't expecting to get so much Grace content in this book. I really liked it. I'm not sure how I feel about the character. I enjoy reading about her as a character. I just don't know if I'm like super sympathetic to her. I don't, I don't know. I definitely understand her more. I think she's a character that I'm going to have to sit with for a while and think about. I really did not expect, yeah, her turning herself in or her really pulling herself away from Tatiana. Although I loved that she finally did stand up to her mother. That was great. I really enjoyed her and Lucy spending so much time together. I think that's a really interesting pair. And speaking of Lucy, I loved Lucy in this book. I liked her a lot in book one, but I feel like we didn't get a lot of Lucy content. In this book, we got so much Lucy content and I loved it. It makes sense because she's on the cover, right? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think we'd get that much, which my theory is that Grace is going to be on the cover of book three. That's my theory. Um, it's really windy, so the house is like creaking all over the place. It's really pleasant, actually. I quite enjoy it. Oh, did I leave the door open? Lucy raised Jesse from the dead. It finally happened. I'm here for it. Obviously there are gonna be consequences and her story is tied up in Malcolm Fade's story and I am all for that as well. I love warlocks. Give me more. James, he finally broke out of grace, is hold. But I think of all the endings, his felt the most like like I was like, ah, yes, my heart is ripped out, but eh. It wasn't an unexpected way of ripping out. Obviously, him and Cordelia had to fall out again because that's how their relationship seems to be going. Um, obviously, it hurt. I'm not, like, saying it didn't. I definitely felt every single emotion I was meant to feel, but it wasn't, like, one that surprised me necessarily. There is that really funny and awkward moment, though, where he's talking to Matthew's, like, doorkeeper, I guess, and... He's like, oh, that's not his cousin, that's my wife. <laughs> and the doorkeeper's like, ooh, sorry, mate. <laughs> like, that was funny. Matthew, ah, I love Matthew. I really want him to get better. I don't think Paris is gonna be a good idea for him. When you're an alcoholic, it doesn't just like easily fix like that, but I want him to get better. I really do. 
and Cordelia. I'm, ugh, ugh, I, I will say, as, as like clearly, f not forced, but like as clearly like built into the story as it was to build tension, her hearing James say what he did to Grace, him saying what he did to Cordelia, all that like misunderstanding, as much as like the misunderstanding trope can be overused. I think this was done so well because it makes so much sense. And poor Cordelia, huh, I want her to be happy. I want her to have a happy ending. And like I said in my last little snippet, I kind of want it to be with Matthew. And not just because I love Matthew, but because I love the idea of a character growing into a love and it being just as important and strong as like this sort of fire and oil thing she has going on with James. So yeah, I, I am kind of rooting for them as much as I love James. Like I am a Harrendale stan, so don't get me wrong. Uh, Alistair, I, I don't wanna say I feel like I missed something, but he does mention he's gonna go pack a bag and then that's never really brought up again. I'm pretty sure Cordelia gave him Cortana or something cause she doesn't have it anymore. And he obviously is like leaving Thomas. I didn't like that. I thought that was not good. Um, it makes sense story beat wise, but I was just like, ugh, again, <laughs> because like they just got together. I know Alistair doesn't think much of himself, but I don't know. Maybe I wanted Thomas to fight for him a little more. I don't know. I hope that their rift doesn't last very long into book three because I think like having at least one healthy relationship would be good for the storyline at this point. Also, I hate Charles. He's a dickwad, so. Christopher didn't really have much to do He's gonna end up with Grace though, right? Like that's what it says on the family tree, but I know we can't trust the family tree, but also like their relationship seems to be moving in that direction and I want them both to be happy. I will say that, I do want Grace to be happy. I can say that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, he really didn't do much. The pithos is a really cool instrument and wow, wouldn't that have been helpful in the dark artifices? <laughs> Obviously it's a demonic instrument, but still. Um. Paris, the next book is gonna take place in Paris. At least partly, I'm assuming. <laughs> I can't wait. I love fantasy books in Paris. So. <laughs> um, oh, but characters, I didn't finish. Anna and Ariadne break my heart. I love them. I loved watching their characters. I think they have a fantastic dynamic. They're probably my favorite dynamic of any couple in the series. And yeah, I cannot wait to see more of them. I really hope they end up together. I really need everyone in this series to have a happy ending. You have no idea. You have no idea. We also got some good Will and Tessa content, so perfect. I love that. But I think that's it for the vlog. I think that's it. I am going to really enjoy going through it again when I edit because I love watching my reaction to stuff. So yeah, I will leave you here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with me. If you wanna see more content like that, definitely subscribe. And if you really like this video, definitely leave a like so that I know. I am going to be posting reading vlogs on the regular. They're not all going to be pointed and centered around one book or anything, but they are going to be reading vlogs. So if you really enjoy reading vlogs, that's definitely something you can look forward to. I'm not doing a full review of this book because I don't really think I could. It's definitely a five-star read. Maybe when the series is over, I'll do a series review, kind of like I did with Memories of Thorn. But uh, yeah, I feel like everything I had to say, I said here. So I hope you enjoyed the book. If you did, let me know down below. Let's talk about it. And if you didn't, let me know down below. Let's talk about it. I'm curious to see what parts you may not have liked. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys in a few days. Bye.